Ladies and gentlemen, today I want to share a powerful truth with you. Hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. We live in a world where natural talent is often celebrated. But let me tell you, it's the relentless dedication and effort that truly paves the way to success. I've seen countless individuals with immense talent fall short because they relied solely on their gifts. On the other hand, I've witnessed ordinary people achieve extraordinary things through sheer determination and hard work. I've experienced it in my own life. When I faced obstacles, it wasn't talent that saw me through. It was my unwavering commitment to putting in the work. Hard work is the great equalizer. It doesn't matter where you come from, what your background is, or what innate abilities you possess. What matters is how much effort you're willing to put in, how many hours you're willing to dedicate, and how resilient you are in the face of adversity. So let's delve into the power of hard work and how it can transform your dreams into reality. It is a fact that most people are unaware that Monday mornings between 8 Bon and 10 Ga AM are the most common times for people to experience their first significant heart attack. And 9 Bon AM, those preparing to report to disliked and unhealthy employment. What is it that you could enjoy doing every day of the week to make yourself smile? You must begin to say yes to your life. You must begin to say yes to your aspirations, to the future as it is being written, and to your potential. You know, I used to declare that each year would be my own, but one good year won't be enough for me, ladies and gentlemen. How many of you could use a decade or two? Please raise your hands. Wonderful, fine. This is what I want to do right now. I want to tell you how you can start claiming this decade as your own. How many of you are aware deep down that you haven't lived up to your full potential or accomplished everything you could possibly be capable of. How many of you really need to respond with no, I haven't done everything I can? Please raise your hands. All right, excellent. We now know that people function inside the confines of their self-perception rather than acting on what they are aware of in life. I want to share with you how to start seeing yourself in a bigger light and how to start living this decade of your life because it will be quite difficult to accomplish that. You'll need to put in a lot of effort and continue your journey toward becoming a professional and personal self-master. It will also need you to start believing that you are capable of putting in the necessary amount of work, dedication, action, preparation, or whatever else it takes to move your life in the direction you want it to go. Hence, one of the first things I want you to do is take a moment to reflect on your life as it stands and identify something that is meaningful to you and gives it purpose. Consider what you would like to have or build for yourself, your loved ones, or society as a whole. I would like you to keep this in mind. Initially, I wanted you to focus on not worrying about the internal dialogue you will experience. Forget about the method you're going to use. That is going to happen. You will create a strategy. You'll figure it out. You'll develop into the kind of person who can draw in the people, assets, and other necessary elements to turn that into a reality. But I want you to pay attention to what's going on within. I was sitting in an audience once when Zig Ziglar, who I think is one of the world's best motivational speakers, was making a speech. I was watching him go back and forth in the audience, and I thought to myself, I'd like to do that. That's something I can accomplish. I asked the man sitting next to me as I bent over, how much do they pay him to do that? 5,000, he said. I know I can do that, I uttered. I also thought highly of him. Afterwards, while I was returning home from Tampa, Florida to Miami, Florida, my inner voice told me, Les Brown, you can't do that. You're not a college graduate. You really cannot do that, Les Brown. You lack both the resources and the connections. You've never held a position with a large company. Why do you believe that an hour of talking can bring in more money than a month of labor? I have a question for you. How many times have you considered doing something you wanted to do but were persuaded out of it? Please raise your hand. 
The majority of people, ladies and gentlemen, take their ideas and greatness to the cemetery with them because of that inner dialogue. A minister said lately, you know, the richest place on the planet. And it was absolutely accurate. It's not the diamond mines or the gold mines spread around the globe. The cemetery is the richest spot on earth because we will discover inventions in the graves that we were never even exposed to. Concepts, aspirations, and desires that were never realized, as most individuals, for whatever reason, permit that inner dialogue to prevent them from ever following their objectives. Now let's start examining what is needed to make this our decade. Why is it that the majority of people never fulfill their potential or accomplish their goals? Fear is one. Furthermore, we are born with just two types of fears, the fear of loud noises and the fear of falling. We come to like the dread of failure more than any other fears. The dread of achievement comes next. That was one of the main obstacles I had to overcome. I was working on a big project that eventually grew and became very profitable. I thought I couldn't manage it. So I ran away from it in a panic and gave it to someone else. Another factor that prevents most people from accomplishing their objectives is the tendency for many people to settle into comfort. They cease developing and cease desiring anything. They start to feel content. They give up trying to find ways to validate themselves. They cease placing objects before them. A wonderful man named George Bernard Shaw once stated in something I was reading, that to have succeeded is to have fulfilled one's duties here on earth. Similar to how a female spider kills a male spider after he succeeds in courtship. I like a state of continual becoming with a goal in front and not behind, he continues. I recall an elderly gentleman approaching me after I had given a speech at a large firm. He said, you know, That's really great motivation for you young guys, but I've done all my work. I am at a loss for what else to do. Oh, certainly you have a lot to offer, I said. You are really valuable. It indicates that your business is still ongoing and that you are still here. Feeling unworthy is another obstacle that prevents us from achieving our objective. This is where many folks run into difficulties. See, when you don't think you're worthy of your objective, you'll start unintentionally engaging in self-destructive behaviors like procrastinating, putting things off all the time, and wasting time. And that's what life consists of, something else impeding our progress toward our objective. And we frequently do it as a result of our excessive time spent griping and assigning blame to anyone or anything. Two, it reminds me of a friend of mine who told me how one day he was strolling past this house and noticed some folks seated on the porch. Additionally, a dog was sitting on the porch, just whimpering and wailing. He asked the owner, why is this dog moaning and groaning out of curiosity? Because he's lying on a nail, the owner added. So why doesn't he get off, he asked. He claims that the pain is not severe enough to allow him to get off. How many of you know people who are constantly whining and complaining about life? Okay, they may complain endlessly about their jobs. I'm over my work here, I'm over you, and they never take any action. They simply constantly grumble, sigh, and lament. They just have enough energy to moan about it. In fact, they think that's similar to taking action since they haven't reached the stage when they're weary of complaining about being exhausted, just whining. No, you can't get where you wanna go with it. That can't make your reality come to pass. The majority of people are also prevented from achieving their own greatness and potential by their surroundings. A great number of people base their beliefs on their place of birth, current stage of life, and personal identity. All they know is that, ladies and gentlemen, I should not be doing what I am doing at this moment, given my circumstances. You see, even though I don't know you personally, I can tell that you possess brilliance. You are capable of things that are beyond your wildest dreams. You possess abilities and aptitudes that you haven't even started to explore. 
Given my circumstances and background, no one could have persuaded me to accomplish what I am doing at this moment. I was born on 62nd Street in Liberty City. We were adopted when my twin brother and I were six weeks old. I was classified as educable, mentally retarded, and classified as EMR when I was in the fifth grade. I was placed back into the fourth grade and remained there until I graduated from high school. Despite my lack of college training, this is what transpired. In my life, there was an intervention. A man who, at a time when I did not see anything in myself, saw something in me. I will never forget waiting on a buddy of mine who was in his class to practice for a play. He urged me to walk up to the board and write something on it since he did not show up. I replied, sir, I can't do that. Why not, he asked. Well, I am, I said. I attend a special education program. What do you mean? He asked. Go up to the board and write down what I'm going to tell you, I said. I told him, I, sir, I can't do that. Why not? I am mentally retarded, but educated, and out from under his desk. Don't ever say that again, he said. You don't have to accept someone else's perception of you as true. My life was then altered by that. Oliver Wendell Holmes famously stated that once one's mind is opened up to new ideas and concepts, it is never content to return to its previous state. It appears that a few of you will have a breakthrough. A portion of you will return and examine your dreams, dismissing them. A few of you will start to exclaim, hey, look here as you examine yourself. I am aware that I haven't done everything I could. I want the goal you have set for yourself to be one that will push you, something that will test you. Osborne once stated that you will never progress unless you try to accomplish something that you have already mastered. What is anything that you looked at once and determined you were not capable of completing, that you convince yourself otherwise? Bring it back out there, whatever it is. The method you'll use will become clear to you eventually. See, ladies and gentlemen, you don't always get what you want in life. Life gives you what you are, not what you want for. And you know what? The good news is that by striving to better ourselves, we may always become more. Thus, the first step in making this your decade is to start examining your life and where you are at this moment. Which qualities do you possess? What shortcomings do you have? What brings happiness and a sense of fulfillment into your life? For you, what does a rich and complete life mean? What is it that you could enjoy doing every day of the week to make yourself smile? Consider that in all aspect of your life, including your career, relationships with family and friends, and spirituality. When you start to figure out what it is that you want, that's when you go on to the next phase, which is figuring out what you want. You now have to determine whether or not you deserve that. Please repeat after me. I am worthy. I'm worthy of everything that life has to give. I am worthy. Describe my life's purpose. Shake hands with people on your right and left and tell them to find their mission. You never know. You might live a longer life if you actively pursue your goal. The top murderer in this nation. Heart disease is the most common ailment we have. That is the primary murderer. And when is the majority of people's first significant heart attack, if you ask them? Some individuals will tell you that it's because of things like obesity, cigarette smoking, high blood pressure, or cholesterol, all of which are contributing reasons. But the truth is that most people are unaware that Monday mornings between 8 and 10 at a.m. are when most people have their first significant heart attack and 9 to a.m., those preparing to report to disliked and unhealthy employment. You see, you are essentially committing spiritual suicide when you don't pursue your goal. You'll discover skills and abilities you never realized you had when you set and achieve goals that push you outside of your comfort zone and stretch you. Since I knew elementary school children had no idea what I was talking about, and they gave me a certain amount of credibility, I started speaking only to them. We enjoy you. Yes, yes. After that, I completed my junior and senior years of high school, joined a number of civic, religious, 
and community organizations, and eventually attended colleges and enterprises. I'm currently traveling throughout the nation as well as abroad, but if I hadn't been willing to take a chance, I never would have learned what I am capable of doing at this point. And you have to be prepared to take that on. You must have confidence in yourself. I worked for a large firm that was going through a severe downsizing, which is another way of saying that they were firing a lot of people. Thus, the employees went up to them and informed them that they qualified for an early retirement. If you accept the buyout package during this time limit, we will provide you $300,000. But you might be one among the persons let go after this period of time when we have the downsizing, in which case you will forfeit all of the perks we are currently discussing. Also, the most severance money you can receive is for two weeks. Just half of those who were eligible, ladies and gentlemen, took this. Permit me to share with you. Had I been present, I would have gone to request your check. Heard me tell Marvin his check. He's got his mama beat. How come? I immediately would have grabbed the money and written checks to other people. Les got your check, they stated. See, folks, trying to be safe is a waste of a short life. It's erratic and far too brief. Life's too short to be miserable. This is the issue. In life, there is no safe place to be. I'll explain why. Not many individuals are aware of this modest secret. Life is too short to leave alive. Hi there, life is too short to leave alive. Therefore, no position is safe, either on the field or in the stands you could perish. Well, you might as well show up to the field and enjoy yourselves. Therefore, you must choose to be brave if you want to make 2018 your decade. You see, in life you have to be brave. You must face life head on. I recall working for a huge firm. There were two people sitting across from me at a presentation I had to do. I'm looking at the last two finalists and that involved my firm, the man added to the other man. And their company stated, listen, this guy has no credentials when you look at his credentials. Here we have an advantage. Between us, we have two PhDs. I got up and started chatting to myself in the restroom. Les Brown, I replied, what's up with their two PhDs? You have to look after your mother and six kids. And before I even entered the meeting, I strolled there feeling, looking and smelling wonderful. All right? And that table was across from me. As soon as we begin negotiating, I act with complete assurance. I treated them as though I had that contract with them from the moment they were born. They used one of every nine million sperm that survived to complete this deal, and I was awarded the contract. Hi there. Thus you must choose to be brave. Most people attempt to creep throughout their lives. No, no, no. Attempting to keep things lighthearted. No, no, no. If you lead a carefree life, you will eventually become a casualty. No, really, really, in life you have to have courage. You must face life head on. And now for something different. You have to have optimism. As you can see, a lot of individuals become pessimistic and start sending a lot of bad energy when things don't go their way, even if they want them to. No, no. You must exert a purposeful, focused, and conscious effort. I'm going to be optimistic. You see, when you are confident in yourself, things will come together for you. When you have a deep inner knowing that you will succeed in some way, and that's only a small portion. These are only a few of the hoop jumpers you must clear to get there. It's all right. My acquaintance went to apply for a job, but the employers rejected her since she was so bare. To heck with you then, okay? Hold on, just one more minute. They simply don't work anymore. Keep your past grudges at bay. Never bring up the boys. Mom, come on. And now for the final item. You must be hungry if you hope to accomplish your objective and get a competitive advantage. Many people adore me for sharing this tale. You know, my first big priority after graduating from college was to get my mother a house. And Paul Harvey was my broadcasting hero. Additionally, I wanted to get into broadcasting. I also cherished the disc jockeys that were broadcast. And my dream job was to work as a disc jockey. And Mr. Washington told me something I will always remember. Who served as my high school mentor? Do this again. He quotes Whitney Young. 
Being ready for an opportunity is preferable to not having one. Instead of being unprepared for an opportunity, have one. See, I set out to improve my vocabulary and communication abilities. I began to picture myself as a disc jockey. I could picture myself there, hosting a discussion show, spinning records, and drawing in audience members. My idea, my fantasy was that. I thought about that all the time. And I would constantly practice. What does practice make? Not at all. This has just made you forget that. Improvement comes only from practice. Perfectionism is unattainable. It must be removed from a lexicon. It isn't real. Improvement comes only from practice. There's always room for improvement. You haven't yet produced your finest work. You have an opportunity to transcend yourself while you're still here. Therefore, give up on perfection. It isn't real. It only leads to better results. I would therefore practice daily, 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 and so on. At last, I went to this radio station and approached a man named Mr. Blah Blah about a job. And I said, sir, how are you doing? I would like to work. I was employed at the Fontainebleau Hotel on Miami Beach. The June Taylor and Jackie Gleason dancers were well known at the time and my all time favorite TV show, most wouldn't recall, Fort Tipton, John Barris. Hello, I'm Michael Anthony. I have a $1 million check. What percentage of you still recall that show? Okay, The Multimillionaire, that was my all time favorite TV show. This is my dream, you know? And every time we would see ourselves leaving Miami Beach, I would say to myself, oh, that's the house. I also received my million. I'm planning to buy a house over there for my mom. That's my fantasy then. I approached Mr. Butterball and he asked, have you ever worked in radio? No, sir, I said. Have you ever worked in journalism before? No, sir, I said. I said, but if you don't give me the chance, I'll never get experience. Yes, sir, I have been practicing a lot. I apologize, but we don't have a position for you, he stated. Thank you, sir, I said. He was unaware of my motivation for being there. My explanation, my goal was to make enough money through radio so that I could buy my mother a house. I returned to the radio station once more. How are you doing, Mr. Butterball? I asked. Les Brown is my name. I am aware of your name. I thought I saw you here yesterday. Yes, sir, I said. I said, are any of you employed here? I told you yesterday that none of us had jobs. Indeed, sir. But I reasoned that someone might have quit or been dismissed. I was ignorant. I went the following day. How are you, Mr. Butterball? Yes, he replied, but I didn't take it personally. How are you doing, gentlemen? Do any of you work here? I told you yesterday, didn't I? Additionally, we had off the day prior. Okay, sir. I thought perhaps someone had died. I was ignorant. I was ignorant. The following day, I went and appeared as if nothing had happened. Like that was the first time I saw him. Mr. Bonneville, how are you doing? Now that you've heard, boy, get yourself useful. He added, get me some food, please. Yes, sir, I said. You see, you have to be willing to put in the work necessary to get what you desire more often than not. I therefore started doing their errands. I went and got them both lunch and dinner and every kind of food imaginable. I would eventually bring the food to them in the control room and I wouldn't go until they specifically asked me to. I would also see them operating the controls and I'd commit their hand gestures to memory. And before long, they would confide in me to handle their cars to go pick up performers who had arrived in town. Sam Cooke, Donna Ross, and the Supremes are just a few of the entertainers that entice us. I would take them in the disc jockey's automobiles and drive them all over Miami Beach. Despite not having a driver's license, I drove as though I did. At last, I happened to be at the radio station one day. Additionally, Rock was consuming alcohol while he was on the radio. It was lunchtime on Saturday. There were just the two of us. The other guys were all booked, and I was shouting, 
Drink, rock, drink, as I peered at him from the control room glass. Sip, Robin. If Robin had asked me to take a drink, I would have gone to buy him some more. Soon after, the phone rang. Was in charge overall. I greeted them. Les, this is Mr. Klein, he continued. I acknowledge that. Rock can't finish his program, he remarked. I acknowledge that. Would you please call one of the other DJs to come in? He asked. Yes, sir, I said. I ended the call. Now he must be thinking I'm insane, I said. I, I gave Cassandra, my girlfriend, and my mother a call. Come out on the front porch and turn up the radio, I shouted to them. I'm going to go live soon. After about 20 minutes of waiting, I gave him another call. I couldn't find anybody, Mr. Klein, I said. Little boy, can you segue the records? He said. Yes, sir, I said. Go in there and don't say none here, he said. Yes, sir, I said. I was eager to take charge of those controls. I switch on the headphones, I said. Look out, this is Les Brown, your platter playing papa, LB Triple P. None existed prior to me, and none will exist following my departure. That makes me the one and only, young, single, and eager to socialize. Genuine, authentic, and Dublin qualified to meet your needs. A great deal of activity. I'm your love partner. Go on, sweetheart. I was starving. Being in control of your fate lifts your spirits, isn't that right? Makes you feel good. It provides options for you. There are other things you can do. You see, buying my mother a house was my first big objective. Abraham Lincoln once said, all that I am and all that I ever hope to be, I owe to my mother. This makes me think of him. One day I told my mother, mama, I'm going to buy you a house when I grow up. You won't have to report to work each day either. It won't require you to work. Mama, just take a seat. As she changed and got ready to head to the M&M cafeteria, I basically followed her about. I told her to watch, since one day she won't have to come here to go to work. Outside, it's pouring rain. There won't be a rainy commute to work for you. You just do what pleases you, such as staying in and making me some sweet potato pie. My mother made a type of sweet potato pie that is unsuitable for eating while wearing shoes. Please remove your shoes so that you can wiggle your toes. That was my dream, though. My passion was that. When I saw that, it motivated me. That's why I was the way I was. Finding the things that will keep you going when things become difficult is one of the things you need to do in order to make this your decade and accomplish your goals. Because things will become difficult. It is going to be quite difficult. Everything will come crashing down once you make the decision to advance and gain new skills. All that is capable of happening, or that will occur, will occur. And they refer to it as Murphy's Law when it occurs at the worst conceivable time. You see, the moment you choose to move to a different frequency, it's similar to what happens when you board an airline and are instructed to do what? Put on your seatbelt. Since some of you are already feeling the turbulence that comes with ascending, you will encounter some during this process. That should not frighten you. It's going to take some time for you to reach a comfortable height, so anytime you decide you want to go to the next level, you better buckle up, both mentally and spiritually. You will eventually arrive. It is present. However, you must pass through this stage. You develop in this way. That's how you grow. Life truly is like riding a roller coaster. It's okay to be down occasionally and up sometimes. There are instances when things go smoothly and instances when they don't. However, it's during the dark times that you find your true self. You put money in your pocket for the lean times in this affluent period. You put it in your heart during hard times. That's when you come to terms with who you are. So list five things that give you confidence. What makes you deserving of your objective? What are the five reasons you refuse to give up when life catches you off guard? When the messenger of suffering comes calling, what will you do? 
When life throws you to the canvas, what will keep you in the game? You see, this Buster Douglas was not the same Buster Douglas that faced Mike Tyson in the previous bout. Look, during the altercation, Douglas the Buster had been knocked down. Mike Tyson had recently left an alcohol treatment facility. His mom had passed away. His wife suffered from a fatal illness. He was viewed as worthless and unsavory. Buster Douglas had an excuse to get back up after being knocked out. I'm dedicating this fight to the memory of my mama. However, after losing his last battle and being guaranteed $24 million, he simply said, hurry up and count me out, regardless of whether he stood up or not, or I don't blame him either. Why suffer harm? Refuse. How come you left so quickly? There is going to be an injury. Me. Therefore, you need to have some reasons for when life knocks you down and it goes to hell, it will knock you down when people let you down. This can happen when they betray you, when they lie to you, or when they say, oh, you can count on me, only to show up and leave you hanging. And when you want to give up and throw in the towel, that's what will happen. And that's what will occur when life falls apart and hits you in the face. It starts suffocating you as soon as it brings you to your knees. Do you have a dream? No, I do not have a dream. And that will take place. For what reason do you recall being able to call upon, reach out to, or summon the strength to get back up? Track down that cause. Since I said life after it had knocked me down, my motivation for achieving this is to make my mother proud of me. My motivation for taking this action is to provide a better life for my children than I have had. I'm taking action because I've been told my entire life that I'm a loser and that I won't succeed. I've heard people call me names my entire life, return them to the welfare division. My goal in doing this is to deceive them. Like Frank Tanantra once observed, I think that great success is the best kind of retaliation. I'm pursuing this in the hopes of being really successful. When life knocks you down, try to land on your back because if you can look up, you can get up. That type of bravery, affirmation, and reason to inspire me is what I gain from that proverb. That being said, what are some of the reasons you can think of to stay tough and in the game when things don't go your way, you run out of money, or something unexpected happens? That can serve as both a comforting staff and a rod for you in trying times. These justifications are crucial. According to Nietzsche, you can withstand practically anything if you understand why you are here. Thus, ascertain the motivations behind your actions. Discover the reasons that will fortify you, cause you to walk by faith rather than by sight, cause you to pursue your dream in spite of everyone's opposition, or cause you to lose faith in yourself. That's a lonely sensation, let me tell you that. It feels isolating, especially the ones you're doing it for, those who will get the most from it, or the individuals who ought to be at the top of the encouraging club. Oh, it stings so terrible when they finally say, you can't do it, and they join the discouraging club. I can relate to that. Do you have close loved ones that give you the, why don't you try something else look when they see you? How about giving up? But this is my life, I said. I must complete this task, Les. Your work at Sears was excellent. A fat man such as you. I can't go back to Sears, Mama. I am unable to. I'm not able to. I was able to work for myself. That's not something I can do. It's ladies and gents, you know. You can already see the ceiling when you work on a project that leads to a dead end. It's similar to leaving a movie in progress. There's something lacking when you watch the movie again after you've watched it. The hero, you know, is not going to perish. You already know how things will turn out. That's why many individuals experience this. One woman told me that she felt like a refrigerator crashed on her shoulder the moment she walked into work because she knew she had reached her limit. You see, they're giving her enough money to prevent her from leaving. She has also put forth just enough effort to avoid being let go. Raise your hand if you know anybody who is like that. You remained motionless. You, to what end? I'll only hint at it. 
I'll only hint at it. Okay, let's go on to something else. Make the decision to be content. You see, I'm making you laugh a lot. See, life is just too brief. Looking around and feeling Hobel's fatigue with Dudley. We can take life too seriously at times. Oh no. Make the decision to be content. Look for small things to giggle about and get tickled about. Look for methods to enjoy yourself right now. Many say, I'll be happy when I pay off all of my bills. No, 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 I'll be content after my divorce. Oh, please, 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 as long as the kids are saying, oh, no, no, I'll be content. You wanna be happy right now, but nothing is guaranteed. Nobody tells you that you won't be here in two, three, or four years. You therefore desire to be content in the present moment. Say it with me again, I have to commit. To be happy, I have to commit to something. To be content at this moment. All I got right now is this. Give a little shake to both your left and right and tell them you deserve to be happy. Make the decision to be content. Since you now find new meaning in life, simply taking in the view of the sunset, life, or the natural world, taking a stroll. The small things in life are what really matter. Here's something more you should start doing to turn this decade into your own. You wanna start purging your life of any poisonous individuals. Greetings, energy suckers. Remove them from your life. You see, ladies and gentlemen, achieving your goal requires a lot of energy. To achieve your goal, a lot of emotional, mental, and spiritual energy is required. When one person is around your neck, you cannot run as quickly as when 100 people want to go. You see, partnerships come in two varieties. Sid Simon discusses this, healthy partnerships and unhealthy partnerships. The relationships that give you nourishment are the ones that motivate you. They inspire you. They make you feel your best. Relationships with people who constantly criticize you are toxic. They are just able to point fingers. They are limited to taking advantage of your flaws. All they can do is make you aware of the errors you have previously committed. You should avoid these people for your health. Blood pressure can rise in toxic people. A barrel can be ruined by one fruit. One bad energy drain has the power to ruin your entire life. I know people who have had their life destroyed by someone who wasn't good to them. You see, there are folks that aren't healthy for you. Hi there. They do not benefit you. They must be removed from your life. You see, a lot of people tolerate a lot of stupidity out of a desire not to die alone. This is my belief. A one to a box theory is what I think. This is a question you should ask yourself. Write down the names of the people you speak with the most and ask yourself through these relationships, what kind of person am I becoming? Does it support my spiritual, emotional, and mental development? Is this relationship helping me become a better person? Do they make me feel my best? Do they motivate me? Do they support me in being my best self? Do they require me to extend? It is necessary for you to examine the individuals in your life and determine the type of person you are becoming as a result of those relationships. Birds of a feather, as my mother used to say, flock together. If you hang out with losers, you'll also become one without realizing, without realizing. You'll learn to follow their lead. You'll adopt their routines. Most importantly, you'll pick up on their outlook on life. You will also become cynical and negative if you spend all of your time around cynical and negative people. Thus, you must keep an eye on yourself. Many of us are seeing other people's life their conclusions and their consciousness firsthand. Another thing that happens is that you start examining your life and your goals. Aligning yourself with influential people is another essential step you need to take. Assemble yourself around supportive individuals, people that you can grow from, learn from, and who can empower you. That is crucial. Check to see if somebody in your immediate vicinity can help you flourish. I joined the National Speakers Association when I decided I wanted to be a speaker. I desired to be in the company of Dwayne Dyers, the Zig Ziglar's, and Dr. 
Norman Vincent Peale, I desire to surround myself with like-minded individuals. I wanted to take notes from them. You also wish to carry things out. You want to surround yourself with like-minded individuals who share your dreams and way of thinking. Those who hope for more from life. People who, in contrast to most people, are reaching out, looking for, and pursuing a greater purpose in life. It was once said that one should constantly aim to succeed in life because the overcrowding is at the bottom. You see, you want to avoid being at the bottom. See, being at the bottom is easy. Being a loser doesn't require any work, motivation, or drive in order to maintain your current low status. However, it demands all from you. You must muster the courage to declare, I'm going to challenge myself, ladies and gentlemen. Come on, Les. I have to force myself out of bed sometimes. I don't do things that I know I should. I do things that I shouldn't. I've discovered that your greatest opponent is none other than yourself. An old African adage states that the adversary outside cannot harm us if there is no enemy within. Thus, consider that. You must therefore redefine yourself as you start to consider making this your decade, starting to consider changing your life and starting to consider yourself. Who do you need to become to create what you want and who are you right now? What about you needs to change? What activity do you now engage in that could put you at risk? What is it about you right now that you have to let go of when you start to look to the future and assess yourself? Since this is no longer appropriate, considering your desired destination, the type of person you need to become, and the expectations you have of yourself, what needs to change? Please repeat to me that you should keep doing what you're doing if you want to continue receiving what you're receiving. Continue with what you're doing. You see, you don't need to be Einstein to do it. 1 a.m. I, correct? It is logical. You are going to keep getting the results in your life unless you alter your pattern, your way of thinking, and your behavior. You see, we're all winners, even though some of us are achieving unwanted outcomes. Therefore, all you need to do is review your strategy and game plan. What have you been doing and how have you been to create this? You see, you are both the producer and the director. You are the lead character in your own life, crafting the narrative. And as you start to examine your life, you have the ability to determine if it is a success or a failure. Examine your life. Take a look at your destination. Regarding your circumstances, don't worry. Regarding your age, don't stress. I have an elderly acquaintance who is over 70 years old and she wants to construct a multi-million dollar building. Dr. Johnny Coleman is her name. Lenders and bankers tell you that's not possible. You're too senior. She disregarded them. Ladies and gentlemen, the building is now a multi-million dollar construction. However, a large number of individuals would have paid attention to that. Many individuals might not have reached that stage at all. Having already told themselves no, they would have talked themselves out of even going to the bank to ask for it. See, now is the right moment. Saying yes to your life is a must if you want to make this your decade. Instead of telling yourself no, you need to start saying yes to your aspirations, yes to your developing future, and yes to your potential. You see, 87% of the self-talk we do is negative. Saying yes to your dreams therefore requires conscious, purposeful, and determined effort on your part. Why not? Why not me? Avoid wasting time like most people do, whining about life. Avoid attempting to appear on talk shows and telling everyone how bad life has treated you. This is what is going on in the audience. 50% are happy it's you and 80% don't care. Okay? So once you are aware of it, you will walk around and discover what they did to me. Who gives a damn? Please leave me before they return. One of my friends made a really significant statement. Hey, it's not important what happens to you, he said. It is everything that matters. How are you going to handle that? It is all that is important. All right? 
life knocks you off your feet. For what length of time will you remain there and declare, you know what they did? For what duration? That racket, who wants to hear it? Make use of that energy to get up, go on, and resume your life. To advance, you must learn to let go of the past. Because they let their past experiences dictate their prospects, a lot of people never follow through on their aspirations. Your past actions don't define who you are now or what you can achieve. That is merely an image of your awareness. That's merely an indication of your maturation and progress. For you, the future is unfolding now. You currently have an infinite future ahead of you. Nobody is aware of your whereabouts. Nobody has any idea who you are, what you're made of, or what lies ahead for you. You're not even aware of that. Gentlemen and women, I had no idea. I could not have been persuaded by anyone that I could accomplish this. I will never forget the day I gave a speech in Detroit, and my friend from high school happened to be backstage and saw me afterwards. I can't believe it's the same guy, he exclaimed. It's not the person you know, I said after giving it some thought. He left. This is no longer his home. We possess the ability to modify our individual past, our life's course, our mindset, and our desired destination. Reaching new heights as a result, as you start to look at this decade and declare that it is yours, as you set objectives that will challenge you and bring out the best in you, as you start to cut individuals who are toxic and negative out of your life, and as you make the decision to take some risks in life. And that's among the most crucial things. According to Vice Code, you cannot grow if you are not willing to take risks. You can't become your best self if you can't evolve. You can't be happy if you can't reach your full potential. And what else is there if happiness is out of your reach? That's where. I'll never forget the day I accomplished my first significant objective, buying my mother a house. I'll never forget the experience. And when you accomplish a significant objective, you will go through this experience. This is for you, Mama, I said as I pulled up to the house, got out, and gave Mama the key. I'll never forget her expression. Oh my God, she exclaimed. When I adopted all of you, nothing could have persuaded me that this would occur. Oh, thank you, she said. And you, you gave me so many fucking headaches, she said. Even though I was one of those energetic kids, Nobody could have predicted what I would grow up to be. Goethe, that was one amazing philosopher. Observe a man for who he is, he continued. He only gets worse. However, observe him as though he were what he could be. Then he realizes his true potential. Furthermore, Mr. Washington saw my requirements by seeing past my thoughts. He said, I see something in you, and I want to live up to his expectations because, well, God, I hope he's right. It's true that nobody lives up to expectations. And lastly, I would like to leave you with this. Choose a cause you are passionate about if you want to make this your decade. See, I work with young children and it brings me the most joy in life. I travel to Chicago every Monday to work with 600 young children at Christ Universal Temple Church, helping them to find meaning and direction in their life. We've created a course of study. We assist those who are addicted to drugs or alcohol in entering a long-term recovery program. If not, we assist them in creating a self-image that does not include drugs or alcohol. I adore seeing these young men's angry and self-hatred expressions on their faces when I visit the Cook County Jail. See the change in them when we start to ignite a flame in them, just like Mr. Washington did in me when we go from that place. Furthermore, something cannot be valued in monetary terms. That's the reason I exist. What gift would you wish to offer the planet? What do you want to get out of here? See, for us to be here, someone had to pay a price. We reside in the best nation on earth, in my opinion. That offers us the chance to change someone's life. It is a blessing that we were dumped on this side of the world. While visiting Manila, a buddy of mine came across a bumper sticker that read, Yankee, go home and take me with you. Choose the kind of legacy you wish to leave when you start to reflect on your life. 
What kind of legacy would you like to leave behind? What three wishes do you have for your funeral? And what impact do you wish to leave behind? What you intend to do is unclear to me. I'm not sure what you hope to accomplish in life. What I know about you is as follows. Regarding you too. Regarding you too. Regarding you too. That you are capable of greatness. That you have been endowed with possessions, abilities, and gifts. Knowing that your life can make a difference and choosing to leave a legacy that as you work deliberately, purposefully, determinedly to nourish and bring them out and establish a feeling of purpose, I tell you that because of your presence, the globe will never be the same. As you declare that this is your decade and start to look toward the future, I would like to leave you with this as my signature. It's now what I live by. And this is all it says. What are your goals? Being the best son I can be to my mother is my aim. Being the best father I can be to my kids is my main objective. And being the greatest motivator I can be, I want to see a drug-free America. I prefer to leave you with this, whatever your end objective may be. You merely state that if you desire something so much that you will go to great lengths to pursue it, that is, if all of your dreams and plans revolve around it, and life would seem pointless and unworthy without it. That is, if you gladly sweat for it, fret for it, plan for it, and lose all fear of opposition in the process. And that is, if you simply pursue this thing with all of your capacity, strengthen your sagacity, faith, hope, confidence, and stern pertinacity. If you are tenacious and grizzled and with God's assistance, you besiege and beset the thing that you seek, neither frigid poverty, hunger or thirst, illness or suffering, a body or a brain can keep you away from it. Leslie Calvin Brown Singh, Mamie Brown's baby boy, is missing from this picture. It's been a privilege as well as a very satisfying pleasure. I appreciate you everyone right here. Remember, talent may open the door, but it's hard work that keeps it open. It's not about being the most talented person in the room. It's about being the one who is willing to work the hardest, to persevere, and to keep pushing forward no matter the obstacles. So embrace the grind, honor the hustle, and commit to giving your best every single day. When you do, you'll find that there are no limits to what you can achieve. Hard work will not only help you surpass those who rely solely on talent, but it will also reveal strengths and capabilities within you that you never knew existed. Let hard work be your guiding principle and watch as it elevates you to heights you never imagined. Your success is not determined by your talent alone, but by the relentless effort you put forth. So work hard, stay dedicated, and let your perseverance be the driving force behind your dreams. Thank you, and may your journey be filled with the rewards of your hard work.